Hello, I am N9 and welcome back to Reentry and Orbital Simulator. The previous videos have gone over getting used to the game pretty much using the Mercury Capsule. We've gone through every mission in the Mercury Capsule campaign. And now I have gone through all of the tutorials for the Gemini Capsule and have taken the exam as you see down here. We have the Academy Ward for Mercury and now Gemini, which means I passed the exam. And for some reason, NASA trusts me enough to slap them into their expensive capsules. So, we are doing the second campaign now, called Mastering Orbital Flight. And this is a fantastic image of Gemini on Titan 2. That is beautiful. And that's what we're going to be flying into space now, in a much larger capsule than Mercury, with a lot more control. As for an introduction to the campaign, a new destination. The race for space between the USSR and the US is still going strong, and the USSR has achieved more firsts than the US. We are in catch-up mode. Both Vostok and the new USSR spacecraft Voskhod is making firsts at a rapid pace, such as longest time in orbit, EVA, and multi-crew operations in space. During Project Mercury, the president announced the goal of landing astronauts on the moon. To reach this goal, the development of a new program called Project Apollo was started. Project Mercury successfully met its goals of sending astronauts into Earth orbit and returning them safely back to Earth. Building on its success, a new spacecraft has been developed to further learn and understand how orbital flight works. The program is named Project Gemini. Before sending anyone to the moon, we need to learn everything needed to do so and test it. Gemini's objective is to understand and test the space travel techniques needed to support the Apollo mission and land astronauts on the moon. A lunar mission needs us to survive in space for up to 14 days, understand the methods of performing extravehicular activity, or EVA, and the orbital maneuvers necessary to achieve rendezvous and docking with another spacecraft. The spacecraft, a two crew spacecraft, and it's much, much larger. It's a larger spacecraft with room for two astronauts and has the capability to alter its trajectory in space. That's right, we have translation controls rather than simply attitude controls. That's going to be very, very fun. The larger spacecraft is divided into three major sections, the re-entry module, the retro module, and the equipment module. Both the retro module and the equipment module are separated from the spacecraft before re-entry. The re-entry module is the pressurized crew cabin that makes it possible to survive in space. It is the only part of the spacecraft that makes the entire journey from launch to splashdown. It is powered by two different power sources, batteries, as in Project Mercury, and the newly developed fuel cells that produce power from cryogenic substances. I believe that's going to be liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. Uh, two attitude control systems, named the RCS, is used for attitude control during entry. Yes, uh, a state-of-the-art onboard computer, that's new as well, will aid the crew in performing orbital maneuvers and guidance. Two different types of joysticks provide control of the spacecraft in both yaw, pitch, and roll, and forward, backwards, up, down, and sideways. Translation control enables rendezvous docking and the crew control of the flight path. Yes, that is going to be very, very fun. The adapter module consists of both the retro and the equipment module. Yes, the equipment module consists of most of the equipment needed during orbital flight. 16 thrusters used for orbital attitude and translational control is located here, as well as the fuel cells and cryogenic substances. Four solid fuel retro rockets are located in the re-entry module and are fired one by one as in Project Mercury. Ooh, I actually didn't know this. Okay. The equipment module powers the spacecraft in orbit and is separated before the retrograde burn. After retrograde, the retro section is jettisoned before entry. Yeah, simple as that. Academy. The press around the world printed your name in every paper after your heroic efforts in Project Mercury. Your skills and knowledge of the spacecraft was the essentials of your success, and the difference between a safe entry and disaster. Your veteran skills are needed in Project Gemini, and you will be a commander with your own crew. Martin, the director of flight crew operation, has assigned a newly hired astronaut named Aaron Skye as your co-pilot. Before jumping into your first Gemini flight, it's time to visit the Academy to get your license. I already have it. The tasks ahead will be complicated, and you will be one of the first to solve them. Or fail at solving them, we'll find out. Missions. After a few successful test flights with the Gemini Titan II launch vehicle, 
it's your turn to be the first who will test the new Gemini spacecraft, and for the first time try to change the shape of the orbit using the Ohm's thrusters. The USSR has already beat the US in having a multi-crew flight using their Voskhod spacecraft, but this is yet to be tested in a US craft. A new spacecraft. The new Gemini spacecraft is ready for its maiden flight, and the flight has been assigned to you and your crew. The goal is to test some of its core systems and its maneuvering capabilities. Alright, I don't know exactly what to expect, but it sounds like we're going into orbit, we're going to do some maneuvers, and we're going to come back home. So, let's hit the big red button. Launch. And here we are in the Gemini capsule. As you can see, lots of gauges, lots of switches, a lot more than Mercury. However, this is going to give us a lot more control of the vessel. Let's check flashlight. Yep, we still got our flashlight. And we have a co-pilot in here. So I'm a little less lonely in this capsule. Let's hit the cabin lights, though, because it's a little dark in here. I'm going to actually up the brightness ever so slightly. All right, yeah, now we can see everything. That's good. That's good. Good morning, N9. How are you feeling? Seats okay? Yeah, the seats are all right. Seats are all right. Feeling good? All strapped in. Sounds good. Once again, you are the first to fly at N9. We are all excited for the mission and seeing this state-of-the-art spacecraft fly. So are we, Patrick. Aaron and I. I guess that's your name. All right, nice to meet you, Aaron. We'll proceed with the cockpit setup. Roger that. Flight and MCC are all ready. Follow procedures. Will do. Right, Aaron, you heard him. Let's get this thing ready for flight. Yes. Right, as you have requested, we are in a cold and dark state. Use the run feature and complete the interior inspection, inspection checklist. All right, that's our T-90 here. So, you know, flashlight on, cabin lights on, uh, dimmer as desired, flashlight off. Yeah, I already did that part. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run through all of this um, without looking at the checklist. And then I'm going to hit run and see what I forgot to do. So we'll leave it. No, we're not even going to leave it up. Uh, the first thing we need to pay attention to is our overhead panel. This is a bunch of fuses and things and, and switches and things that you can turn on and off. Uh, we're going to start with the coolant pumps. We're turning those on. Cryo quantity, stop, reset. Beacons acquire and C are all on. Rescue, I believe that stands for, is off. DC DC converter on. CMAC on. XMTRS, I don't know what that stands for, but I think all of those are on. Uh, the O2 and H2O heaters are on. Clock light, suit fans, uh, those are all on. Uh, let's see, what is this? What is this one? This is a DC-DC con converter. We'll set that to primary. Um, this right here is a cool little feature. We have lights up at the front here. And we also have red lights up in the front here. So I did the same thing with Mercury Capsule where I had red lights because it looked more sci-fi. Uh, so we might do that here. Uh, and this is another cool one. Our FDAI is this thing right here. Or if you're more a Kerbal Space Program, you know it as the nav ball. So the FDAI can light up. Look at that. In low light situations, and even right now, it's a lot clearer to see that. So um, I'm thinking, yeah, we'll leave it on for right now. Looks kind of neat. And then, you know, the cabin lights, we know that. Uh, but moving on next to it, we have the EVAP heater and the Ohms heater. EVAP heater is on, but Ohms heater we will leave off. Uh, let's see, coolant valve is primary and secondary on, O2 rate control on. All right, ACME bias power, we are primary. Roll jets to pitch, not yaw. Uh, ACME control one and two, ohms control one and two, RCS squibs, all those on. Ohms reserve, that will go to, uh, shoot, I don't remember if that goes to squib or not. I'm gonna keep it unsafe. But these are all of our maneuver thrusters. We're going to flip all of these on, all 16 of these on. And our attitude thrusters down here as well. Uh, Acme logic goes to primary, primary, yes. Attitude drivers will be on primary. Uh, and I believe that is it for the top panel. Double checking everything here.
All right, next we're gonna move over to Aaron's seat. So Aaron, scoot over. I gotta get over here to work on the right panel. Auxiliary tape, sequence, inst I don't know what some of these stand for, but I know that we're gonna want all of these on. Radar power, Acme, Inv, RCS heaters, tape recorder, fuel cell control, uh, fuel cell change in pressure, attitude indicator with FDI. This is going to change where the nav ball is. Uh, hmm. I don't think it's supposed to be glitching like that. I wonder if that's the light right now. Uh, let's see. Let's see. No, oh, it's kind of... That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, well, we're, we're gonna set it to, uh, with FDA, I, maybe that will, <laughs> maybe that will fix itself later. Uh, let's see, oh, AC powered Acme, Biomed recorder is on. RCS heater and bus tie will be off, I do believe. Main batteries will be off, squib batteries will be on umbilical. Uh, Ajana control, all of this should be on off. Or safe. And stop, yes. Emergency release, interesting. Yeah, so... Agena control, that is all off as intended. All right. Um, doing things out of order here. Uh, we're going to start the tape recorder. Set that to auto. We will power the uh, this on. I forget the name of this, but it's uh, basically the console uh, to the computer. This is our, our screen, and we have a keypad and stuff for the onboard computer, which is super, super cool. Uh, let's see our fuel cells. They'll stay off. Uh, we'll put them to warm up at the end. X over um, should go on, I do believe. Uh, that should be set for here. Let's go over back to my seat. All right. We got the left panel here, which is uh, some more things to turn on. Everything in the top panel goes on. I'm pretty dang sure. Uh, we got the uh, luck timer, the event timer, boost cutoff, retros. These actually stay off. This goes on. This goes on. This stays off. Secret lines, power control, para control. That is on. Attitude control, boost insert control, retro sequence control. I actually don't know if these actually mean control, but CNTL. That's that's what I view it as. All right, now we have a light test that we can do. See, we have these lights, it's amber, and. Of these lights as red all right and we want to set these to bright for launch situations and we're going to switch this to with fdi as well the attitude indicator i really don't know what's up with that we'll see if that fixes itself though uh all of these will be on safe and it looks like they are in fact on safe here i'm gonna i'm gonna flip these off for right now so that they're not flicking for us uh, but we will turn that back on in just a little bit. All right, so that is the left-hand panel complete. Moving on to, uh, well, in front of us here. It'll want me to set this to up and standby, but then this will start counting up, and it's not technically supposed to until um, liftoff. So I'm not going to actually do that. That's okay, because right here, we got start. Yeah, we have this countdown timer that will count down from launch so we don't have to worry about this we can use this for other uses instead i don't think that's i don't think that's intended but yeah yeah all right so on this panel our suit fans and pressure things will be off radiator flows bypass correct correct uh tda control everything should be off there and closed there uh let's see silence king Record should be set to mom. I I don't know what mom stands for, but you know, if we need to call our mom up here, if we're scared, we can just flip that. We need that switch to be on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this needs to be number one. This needs to be RT. I believe, um, I believe that's, that's everything correct there. Down here, we're going to want to set our rate gyros to primary. Uh, our scanners will stay off for right now. These will stay off for right now. Uh, let's see. Our radar will stay off for right now. But our platform will be set to free. Now what happens when I flick this? Hey, okay. Now that's not flicking. There we go. 
All right, so our platforms are set to free, and now the FDI or FDAI is not flickering. Okay, I'm not sure what was up with that, but it's not really a big deal at all. Uh, so I honestly possibly think that that is everything. Now, at the end of the checklist, we are going to want to flip our fuel cells to uh, warm up instead of off. Uh, but that should be the only thing. Let's hit run. Proceed. Uh, proceed. 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 Because those are all just attitude. Oh, oh no, the logic. I, I didn't hit roll uh, ACME logic to uh, primary. Oh, right. And we want to set our UHF to adapter. And our beacons, our rescue beacon needs to be on. Okay, I missed that. Uh, they want me to power that down. I turned it on. I want to leave it on. So we're going to leave that on. Summoner is desired, is desired, is desired. Uh, that's what I was talking about, the event timer. I don't want it on right now. And then lastly, we set this to warm up. All right, checklist complete. Forgot about the UHF and I missed a switch up here. Uh, but other than that, not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. All right, checklist complete. Please proceed with the battery check and the fuel cell check. Roger that. All right. Roger, you heard them. Let's complete the battery check. Use the run feature and complete the battery check checklist. Well, uh, I know how to do this. So we go to battery check. Roger that. But essentially what it's going to be is switching this to BT, battery test. And then all four of these batteries have a test function. Right now they're on off because we're on inter our external power. So we set this to test. Can see 24 volts test 24 volts test 24 volts and test 24 volts all right battery check is complete proceeding with the fuel cell check okay roger that all right the fuel cell check should simply be turning on all of these and making sure that these all have 24 volts And they do, in fact, have 24 volts. Um, and I think that then we power them down. I actually don't know. Let's let's see. Let's see. Fuel cell check. Yeah, they want me to turn them off again. That's kind of what I thought. We'll turn them on at a later time. Run and clear. Checklist complete. Roger that. All right. That's our batteries checked. That's our fuel cells checked. We are preparing for squib and abort test. Please proceed with the checklist, and when ready for the test, request the squib and abort test using the comms menu. Okay, now we are testing out our squibs here. I'm going to set these to off to start off with. Uh, and we'll go to, uh, let's see, S1. Verify that we have zero volts. We have zero volts. Uh, we'll set this to, all three to umbilical. We have 24 volts. You can confirm. Uh... I don't remember what to do after that. There's there's a specific way of going about this. Uh, one and two, we still have 24 volts, right? So then we set to all the 24 volts, and then we. Oh wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was skipping ahead. What we need is just three, and we verify that that is zero volts. Can confirm that that is zero volts. Now we switch this to S2, it has it, it's at zero volts. We turn these back on, and we're back at 24 volts. And then we will make sure all of them are on, they are, and go to C, and we have 24 volts. And the abort lights are extinguished. And at this point in time, we can request an abort and squibs check. Roger that. We'll start the squib and abort checklist. Use the run feature and complete the checklist. All right. Our abort lights are on. Roger that. Verify abort lights are on. Can confirm. Squib test complete. Aurora abort and squib test completed successfully. And that is all for that. We're going to hit run and clear. Checklist completed. Squibs and aborts are in fact ready. And the aborts on the Gemini capsule are pretty interesting. 
we don't have an escape tower in front of us, for instance. So yeah, Roger, we will switch to internal power at T minus 15 minutes. Walk through the briefing in the mission pad and use time scale if you feel like it. Roger that, will do. Let's head back over to my seat here. Okay, you can have your seat back, Aaron. Thanks for scooting over. The briefing for this. Let's see, the Gemini capsule is designed to carry a crew of two into orbit and has capability of changing attitude in all axes as well as maneuvering in all axes. By carefully maneuvering in a given direction at the correct time with a predefined burn length, we will be able to alter the orbital trajectory of the craft. Before attempting this mission, please complete the academy. I have. Ingress 2 minus 90, cold and dark. Yep, the first Gemini mission has the following primary objectives. Uh, Apogee of 225, perigee of 161, inclination of basically 29, and we're going to execute a burn uh, to circularize our orbit at perigee to make it a 161 by 161 orbit. And then uh, splash down the Atlantic Ocean. Now, if deviations on insertion exist, the parameters will be slightly different. But that's basically what we're going to do. Okay, that is simple. So we're going to go up into orbit of the Earth. Uh, we're going to do an orbital maneuver to change the shape of our orbit. And then we'll, we, will, we will once again return home. That's fun. All right, we're going to time scale to T minus 15 minutes here. All right, T minus 15 minutes. Aurora, we are ready for the switch to full internal power. Complete the checklist using the run feature. All right, copy that. So, excuse my reach, Aaron, but we need to turn these batteries on. We need to turn our squibs on. And we need to turn on our fuel cells. Warm up to on. All right, that should be all set. And uh, oh, let's switch that over there. Then we will switch to internal power. Roger that. And we should uh, we should be on internal power. That should be set. So run and proceed. Checklist complete. Time skipped a little bit. Roger, prepare to run the pre-flight checklist at T minus five minutes. Copy that and complete the pre-light checklist and prepare for flight. Let's do it. Oop, didn't mean to time scale there. All right, so we need to verify our batteries are in fact on. Our fuel cells are in fact on. Uh, we're gonna want to, let's see, that is on. That's on, right. So we're gonna wanna make sure this is on pre-launch. Set that to on. Now we'll watch those numbers change. That means that it's starting up basically and they'll set themselves all to zero or they'll stop moving and we can hit clear to set them all to zero. And that will mean that our computer is online. Uh, I'll let Aaron tell me when that happens in a little bit. For now, we will also want to turn on our suit fans and get these pumps on. Radiator flow still, should still be on bypass. Um, okay, it looks like those that has changed, so we can go ahead and hit start on here, I think. Yeah, computer power on. Um, yeah, so we hit start on the OBC. And then this will start rolling to its intended uh, point. And it takes about 30 seconds to do so. I'll just monitor it as it does. And this is setting our uh, FDAI for ascent so that we can monitor our roll and our pitch. And all right, that is set. Perfect. Perfect. Now we're going to set computer to the ascent module. All right, cool. It's kind of cool about this computer is it runs off of tape. And some of these programs take like 10 to 30 minutes to actually switch to the correct tape. It's a, it's a very interesting process. Uh, let's see. Computer pre-check. I think that is actually all we uh, have to do. Oh, no. <laughs> I almost forgot. We have to arm boost insert and we have to arm our retro rocket squibs. <laughs> I almost forgot to do that. Okay. I'm going to hit run. Uh, that is complete. That is complete. And perform a radio check. All right. Radio check. Read you five over five. Awesome. So we're at T minus three minutes to launch. Now is probably a good time to explain my limited knowledge on the abort modes. Uh, running through the checklist. Monitoring the platform alignment towards planned launch azimuth on the FDAI is crucial. I have done this. Countdown proceeding as planned. Start following the ascent checklist. Okay, double check the platform is aligned. It is. The rocket will roll into a planned azimuth and start pitching into orbit. Keep your hand on the D-ring. Speaking of the D-ring, this is one of our abort modes right here. It's an ejection seat. So abort mode one is from zero 
feet to 15,000 feet, which we can read on here. And something goes wrong, we pull this thing, and this blows off, we get ejected out of the capsule. And we get ejected from our seat, and the parachute will bring us down to the ocean. Uh, that's a thing that will happen. Uh, from 15,000 feet to 75,000 feet, it's abort mode 1 to 2. We have this as an option, or we can ride it out. So what we do is we'd shut down the engine, and then wait for uh, our thrust to actually shut down about five seconds, then we go to abort, and it will eject us, and we proceed with landing uh, as desired. And from 75,000, like, all the way up to orbit, pretty much, it's abort mode uh, two and then three, I think, which are pretty much the same process uh, as that. So it's not a complicated abort. I think I could pull it off if I was, uh, if I was panicking, so <laughs> we're in good shape there. All right, roger that. Yeah, we got this. Can't wait to see that Earth horizon again. Oh, we will see it soon enough.